up everybody so we're pulling into my homeboy luis's house up here in greeley colorado let's see if homeboy's down to show up his whips let's check it out real quick what's up bro what up smoke dog how you doing man up to the north to show some love. hey bro you know i had to come up here to greeley bro and and show everybody some badass low riders man how you been luis blessed blessed very blessed beautiful stress girl and blessed. stress and blessed bro Beautiful garage, my boy. Thank you. Wow. Man, in the rise, bro. So you got a little time that you can maybe get your wife and uh, we could do a little uh, interview, talk about sure. your rides. For sure. Anything for you, you already know. Right on, bro. <laughs> Appreciate you, bro. Appreciate you. Buddy, this is Smokey from the Lowrider Connection, and we're here connecting with Colorado Lowriders with some badass rides. So please stay tuned every week for another episode. Today, we are 54 miles north of Denver, and we are in Greeley, Colorado, connecting with Luis and Nelly Morales, and their beautiful 65 Impala, and their 58 Impala. What's up, guys? How are you? Hello, Smoke. Thanks for inviting us all the way up to G-Town, man. Love coming up here. And you know, getting to hang out with you guys. Haven't seen you guys in a bit, so nice to hang out. You love coming up here, but you came up here. <laughs> it could be the smell. That could be part of it, but. <sighs> Money. <laughs> so, Luis, what is your age and occupation? Um, I'm 43 years old, and I am a supervisor for Will County. Nice. And Nelly, what do you do for your occupation? Um, I'm vice president of HR at my company. Oh, wow. She's the boss. <laughs> She's the boss. At work and at home. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I know you guys, how, how many years you guys been together? Oh, We've been together since 96, married since 2003. Oh, wow. And I'm not good at math. But that's a long time. Yeah. Long time. It's a long time. She was 13, I was 15. Yeah. Wow. And you guys are still rocking and rolling. Oh. Yep. I still decided to put up with him. <laughs> and that's a handful. <laughs> 
So Luis, what made you get into low riding? Um, way back when I was probably about four years old, touched by a car crow was cruising down Fifth Street here in Greeley, and I seen him in the uh, big body Monty, and I just fell in love from that moment. That was it. Yeah, that was it. Just, just it amazed me just seeing the car, you know, go from the ground all the way up, and I was like, what did it just do? Yeah, yeah, you know? and you had to have one. Yep. That's what's up, bro. At what age did you get your first ride, and what was the make and model of the car? Well, my first official vehicle was an 81 Buick Regal, and I was 19 years old, our senior year in high school. Um, my dad got it from Toyota for 800 bucks. For 800 and bucks? It was cherry, mint, old man ride. Wow. Yeah. And then, and then you cruised it and, and then what, what was what was the next car you got because i know you got another car after yeah that well my first official low rider was my 69 impala okay and uh i cruised the the regal for about three years sold that one bought the 69 yeah but we did you're not telling them everything so the regal we did the pinstripes for models on them. oh yeah 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 back not in the day, <laughs> back in the day i was looking to sell some bad pinstripes the they were tape. flaked out in, in leafing actually Oh, wow. Yeah. So, me and my homeboy, Leroy Salgado, actually patterned it out in his, his little mind. Rest in peace, Gabe Salgado. We did it in the backyard. Man, it, it was actually sick. Yeah. That's tight. It was sick. Did you have a fake phone antenna, like, back in the day? <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> yeah. I didn't have the, the, the fender wells painted white, though. Oh, dang. <laughs> did you put cotton over there at car shows? No. <laughs> that's, that's pretty that cool, man. It's a great story. So growing up in Greeley, Colorado, how was the low riding here? Back up? in the day, it was beautiful. Yeah. Um, you know, Island Grove was the main spot. Island Grove was probably a two block radius from 14th and then you hit east to go to 11th and it would take you 45 minutes to an hour just to go one round about that. Wow. It was just bumper to bumper. And it was just amazing back then. The good times. Huh? Yeah, people parked on the sides. It's kind of like Berkeley, you know, but it was just jam-packed. Jam-packed. You know. Was it hard getting parts back in the day? Very much so. We, you know, without the internet or anything, you had to talk to the old, older homies and see who had something, and you did, and maybe shoot through Dollar Magazine and see what you could order, and hopefully it got there because we didn't know where it was coming from. <laughs> yeah, you didn't know where it's coming from. No. Yeah. All right, Luis. So let's talk about the '65 Verb. Where and how much did you purchase this car for? We got it at the Best of Show Magazine Car Show back in, I believe, 2016-17. Um, we were in line for setup, and it came through in a trailer, and she's the one who actually seen the car first. I saw the and for sale sign on the windshield. Yeah. So and we like, always talked about getting a 65, so I was like, that's it. We're she just kept go saying, I'm going to buy it for you. I'm going to buy it for you. <laughs> And yeah. then that was it, huh? Well, and then three days later at work, she's like, hey, when do you want to go pick up your ride? And I was like, what do you mean go pick up my ride? You know? so, <laughs> like that? Yep. Yeah, so that's why the car's name is A Woman's Love, you know, because she's the one who pushed Push, and, yeah. and made it happen. Wow. Because he's always too scared. He's always like, he don't want to make a move, so I got to make it for him. So you got to make down, bro. She had your back <laughs> on this one. I, I got to be cautious. <laughs> <laughs> what was... Like your vision on building the 65, what was like, what what did you want to do to the car? Well, she was clean. So I wanted to keep it simple and classy. You know, and then I had a homeboy who had a 79 Cutlass that was just beautiful. The color combo was immaculate, so I, I kind of had to follow off his thing. I don't know, you might know him. I think his name's Keith Ray is from Denver. <laughs> you know, and, and yeah. Suspicious Mind, that color on that car just kind of set the platform for it just because it was such a beautiful combination. Plus, I'm a Raiders fan. You know, so I so, had to yeah. keep it keep it to that tone. I didn't want it overbearing in your face. I just wanted it classy. And you did it, man. You, it, it's super beautiful, super classy. So what were some of the first modifications you did to this Impala? Um, one of the first things we did is actually took it down to Denver to rip to have it pinstriped. You know, he did a beautiful job. It was red with the gray. Um, not really my style of pinstripe because it was more of a hot rod style. Mm -hmm. uh, we did that and then we uh, pumped it and put the ribs on. It was on some 100 spoke blacks, um, powder coated, and then we ended up putting the trues on it. Wow, the trues really, really do it justice, man. So I got a question for you, man. Up north in Denver, a lot of people wrote skinny white walls. School me on the north and buffed white walls. 
it's a preference for me. I just like them. I, I, I just think it adds so much character because it, it ties in with the original, the Loretta of the 520 with the, the thin white wall, but then it gives the original from the stock hubcaps and the white walls with the big, you know, and I just like the look of it. And plus, you know, I don't know about everybody else, but, you know, I like my way with dick, so they're my <laughs> girls, you know, so, you know, the white walls got to be thick too. I, I, I like thick white walls and women too, you know, right on. <laughs> So thanks for dropping the history about that in that little thing that's been kind of going on for a while. Because a lot of cars up north, they ride buff white walls. In more south, they're real skinny. It's and just, that's a crazy thing to say that because I think that even reflects in other states. You know, California, that's a big thing too. And it's just, it's my preference. I just, I, I like dicks. You like, yeah, you like uh, a dick. I always have. Who did the paint and bodywork on the second time? getting the pinstripe because this is a totally different pinstripe job from when it was featured in lowrider magazine second third or fourth time the four, oh, so the fourth time so who did the either way he did it all um yeah. well the very first the pay job in my body man is on that one hernandez aka balls custom painting um i think he's one of the most underrated painters around he he goes above and beyond when it comes to paint jobs you know and, and plus he's my club brother and i love him to death um, the pinstripes were done by Chow out of Arizona. Uh, he did a wonderful job. He nailed exactly what I wanted. Um, and yeah, they're the, they tag teamed on and made artwork. You did a beautiful job. Did you have a lot of staying in Nelly as well? Picking uh, colors and stuff? The colors, I feel like, uh, I think we're on the same page on the colors. Yeah. The pinstripe designs always scare me because I'm like, oh, how's it going to look? Which, is that too much? Is that not enough? And I didn't want to look. And then I got home after it was done. I was like, wow. I was like, this is perfect. You killed it. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's done. He just had that little writer style, you know? Mm -hmm. Not Nothing against Rip. You know, he does beautiful work. It's just, it wasn't my style. Yeah. And and you, to, you'll never be happy unless you get it done the way you want. Because yeah. it's always going to be an eyesore to you. So Yeah, no, I'm surprised Balls didn't kill me on the paint job because um, we had actually two mishaps on paint jobs. So he had to redo it three times. Just to get it to where it is, the way it is now. Oh wow! Well, and, and I had the same spots the whole damn car. Yeah. Yeah. And I had a car painted by the same painter, and the, the guy he he's he's a good painter, man. He's amazing. One of the best. So when the paint was complete, you started focusing on the motor. What size motor are you running in this six five? And who did the chrome and engraving in the engine bay? It's a Chevy three fifty with a uh, turbo three fifty tranny. Um, all the engraving was done by Crazy Cutting out of Arizona. Um, Charles Valletta, my other club brother, and my compiler, uh, helped me put that in. Uh, he did. If you know Charles, Charles is very meticulous when it comes to stuff like that, so he's my go-to on all my engine stuff. Once the heart of the car was taken care of, who installed the setup and lifted the car? Um, that was a... We, we, uh, three of us did it. It was Charles Valletta and Sean Call. And myself, uh, we uh, went with a Hopples Whammy tank, all engraved, uh, did the wiring, welding, everything. This whole car was tore apart two weeks before the Lord Super Show. We didn't have no powertrain and no hydraulics in the car. We had to put back together before we got you know, featured in 17. We always do that. It's always against the deadline. <laughs> it's less, it's the week it's before. <laughs> it's like homework in high school. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to the last minute. Yep. Who did the engraving? Who did the upholstery? The, the interior is a kit for Classic Industries. It was uh, originally in the car when we purchased it. It was a brand new kit, so we didn't even mess with it. All the engraving was done by also Crazy Cutting out of Arizona. Killer job. Yeah. It, 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 it's, it's just enough, man. Yeah. It doesn't need to be any more. So one question I got to talk to you about, man. If you notice in every car that you have, you always have a small steering wheel. Tell me what what's what, what's the history about that, man? I think I was born in the wrong decade. <laughs> I just love the original '70s style, you know, the chains and everything. Mm -hmm. um, and I get a big influence from my club builder Martin Martin uh, Rodriguez. He, he man, he has a plethora of stash of chains and wheels, and you know, and it's just me and him. We we feed off of each other, and he schooled me a lot on rims, so that's why it's just. A love and a kind of a, a respect to a true OG of the game, you know, and that's kind of why. And, and he 
schooled me on it so much that I just fell in love with it. Yeah. What size steering wheel are you rocking in the 6.5? And the 6.5, this one is a uh, Volkswagen, actually, um, 9 inch. Uh, just stock one, but actually, we've got a custom one coming, so hopefully, it'll be here sooner than later. And what size is that one? Uh, that one's a 8 inch, but a custom uh, wrought iron heart shaped one. Oh, wow. Wooden stuff. Ah, that's going to set the car off perfect. What kind of wheels and tires are you running on the 6.5? On the 65, I got 19, they were originally 1976 made. They're 50 spoke trues um, and a 520, 13 inch. They've been restored and, and uh, re dipped and everything. So they're brand new, but brand new old stock basically without being original. On a buff. Yep. Not a buff. They're, they're, they're croakers. The, they so buffed. Those are the original. That's how big they came? Yeah, yeah, these ain't buffed. Wow. Yeah. That's something I didn't know. Yeah. No, no, no. None of my rims, none of my rims and tires are buffed. They're all stock white walls. They're almost like the, the 155 80 rims we used to be able to get. Back in the day yeah. for 25 bucks. Mm. Not 25 bucks for this deal. <laughs> <laughs> Who did the chrome suspension on the car? Uh, Robert's Tires and Wheels. Yep, out of Denver, Colorado. Uh, nice. The whole front end's chromed out. The uh, rear end, we just did the trailing arms and pumpkin and some little accessories. Um, she doesn't know yet, but uh, we need some upgrades. <laughs> She'll find out once they start arriving. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, the funny thing about that, she's my devil's advocate, because if I go to just the chrome suspension part, I'm she's like, like well, this is great. over there. You know? <laughs> and also, so she's like, always kind of helping you out? Well, she pushes me above and beyond to be better in every aspect of our life, you know? If it wasn't for her, I'd be dead or in jail because you know me, I'm just a knucklehead from the north side of Greedy, you know? Yeah. And she's the one who settled me down and pushed me to be the man I am today. Beauty and the Beast, man. <laughs> Straight up. I'm beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> so after you had the car built, you showed the, the car at car shows. It was featured in Lowrider Magazine. What happened to the car after that? Well, life happens, you know. Uh, Health problems, health problems, financial problems, you know, so it was it was one of those deals where either we sell the car or sell the house, you know. And I've always told everybody, hey, you can't live in your car, so I sold the car, went to Texas for a little bit. Um, luckily God blessed me with a wonderful woman who helped me get it back. Wow, amazing story, man. Because not a lot of people get their car back after selling it. No, and the homeboy uh Carlos uh Manabando. Uh, he did an awesome job. He kept her clean. He didn't. He didn't molest her. He didn't abuse her. You know, she was in a air conditioning humidified garage, and he, he did her well. You know, and he became a, a real good friend of mine. That's cool, man. What a story! It's it's a story because I mean, some people, you know, they they come up on hard times. Sometimes they sell their car and they never see it again. No, and he, he and, did me real well in the car, and uh, like I told him, I go if if I didn't have to sell it, I wouldn't be looking to buy it back. You know, so. Thanks for letting us know the history about the 6.5, man. I'm glad you have it back. So let's move on. You know, most people, we only talk about one car, but with Luis, we get to <laughs> feature two cars. So Luis, man, you got this 58 Impala. What was the condition of the, the 58 when you got it and it came into your hands? She was in... Uh... Oh yeah, seven out of a ten. She was really good. Took him. I got her off, off an old man out of Idaho. He had a collection of fourteen cars. This car actually sold twice at Barrett Jackson. I have all the documentation for it and everything. Um, I was getting look after I sold this, and I was looking back to getting the game, and I was just looking at Cadillacs and, and big body Caprices. But somebody knows I'm an Impala man, and just like everything else, she's like, nope, you're gonna get an Impala. So she pushed me. Went out and got her. She was, you know, a 10 foot car from 10 feet. She looked really good. Um, so we brought her home for a fair price. And then I, uh, then you started doing your thing. Magic touch. <laughs> yeah. Gave her an attitude adjustment. That's what's that. And you built a super classy, man. What were some of the modifications you did to the 58? Well, it was, I still have the original powertrain. It was a 283 uh, with a power glide, um, but the engine, Actually, blew a head gasket, so then I was just looking for a transmission. I was going to build the, rebuild the engine, and a buddy of mine at work, he goes, hey, i got an engine and a transmission for 400 bucks. He goes, I don't know what they're, if they're good or nothing, so I'm going to buy that Charles Roulette. We went over and looked at it, and 
when, when the guy was selling it turned away, Charles' eyes fell out of his head. He said, buy it, buy it. If you don't buy it, I'm buying it. And I was like, I didn't even know what it was. I thought it was a 350. And he's like, nah. He goes, that's a 400. Small block, four ball main. He goes, that's a hell of a price. So brought it. We went through it, checked compression. The engine was good. So we just cleaned her up and and uh, switched out from the 283 to the 400 small block. Wow. So do you burn those white walls? Oh, well, they will light them up. I bet they do. <laughs> she, she runs good. <laughs> And what size of wheels and tires are you running on the 58? Uh, this is actually my first set of 14 7s. Oh, and wow. And they're 14 7, 45 spokes from the 70s, true spokes as well, with the Croker 520. And do you feel the difference? Um, I do not. Um, I went with the 14 7 because of the skirts. Mm -hmm. um, you got to get the offset because if not, then you got to narrow up the rear end. And a gentleman was selling these online, and I seen them. And I was setting her stuff throughout the day about cars and everything. And then we were sitting there on the couch one Sunday morning and she's like, don't be mad. Don't be mad. I'm like, what? <laughs> and she shows me she had bought them for me and didn't even tell me. Well, I knew because they're hard to find so that you don't have to mess with the rear end. And these were fresh so, rebuilt chrome and everything. I was so. like, we're not letting them pass. Like, we're going to get them. Yeah. Bro, I want to stop right here. All the questions. Dude, your lady has your back, she's bro. She's had your back. From the start, bro. Why do you think? Why do you think she's right there? <laughs> she's right here. She's right here. You know, man. She's a soul. Why do you think that one's woman's love and this is body love? It, it all makes sense, man. And and I'm not gonna lie, man. I got some friends that their wives hate to hear about car oh, stuff. Oh, they do. And they do. and you've been blessed. I'm blessed. You're blessed. Yep. So, you know, and, and it's just like one of those deals too, where I always tell the guys, if if you're getting into this game and your wife don't support you. Either you're gonna get a divorce or you're gonna get rid of the car. You yeah. ain't gonna have both. That's true. You know, it's true. You know what's crazy is the fact that, you know, we've been together for so long. We were young. We basically raised each other. Mm -hmm. And I remember him telling me, like, I, I vividly remember this. We're in our little car in high school and we see a little rider drive by. And he's like, man, I work, because he would work hard during high school. And he's like, I work and I don't know why, what I gotta do to get something like that. These guys don't even work hard and they have cars, you know. And so he was just really upset about it. And I knew it was his dream, like forever. And till this day, I've always just supported that dream. Like I just felt it like he was genuine about wanting that. Mm -hmm. And I would never guess we'd be here today with these cars. But I'm like, you know what? If that's what you want, I'm here for it. You know what? I'm here to support you and push you to do better because I ain't rolling around in old junk. <laughs> <laughs> Straight up, man. You're blessed, Louise. No, I know. I know. You know. And I put her to the test. Trust me. I bet. You better get another yeah. tattoo of her. <laughs> she wants me to do a daddy train on my chest. Oh. Yeah. oh. Uh, <laughs> and we will be back for that, people. Let's okay. stop back by to get the unsure edition oh, so we can do it and you guys can uh, show Louise all over the world. <laughs> so, Louise. You, you started this car club, the Boulevard Bullies. Can you give us a little insight of how it all went down and how long you guys have been a club? I got to correct you on that part right there. I didn't start it. I was one of the founders. There was a five of us, including Mr. Reyes, you know, who started it, you know, and I owe all of it to all of them. You know, we've, this is our 15th year. It's going to be our 15th anniversary this year. Um, I've been very blessed with my club, you know, our club, you know, because I have some of the best guys around. Yeah. When, when bullies to me is family, it's my last name. You know, I love it. You know, my, my guys, they've seen me at my best, they've seen me at my worst, you know, and, and they're truly our family. You know, um, Charles Guerra, he's my compadre. Mark, uh, Martin Rodriguez, he's my compadre. Sean, he's my compadre. Adam, he's my compadre. And I we either bless their or baptize their kids or they bless my sword family through and through. You guys are super tight. Yes, we are. And and that's 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 so cool, man, because I was a part of this car club. Yep. And it was the great times of my life, man, that we we, we had some good times. We yep. went and traveled and we did our thing and and uh, I'm so glad to see it still flourishing and up here, man, doing your thing. Some unforgettable memories for sure. Oh yeah. So the, the Boulevard Bullies are always putting on car shows or different events, working with the community. Can you give us some insight on some of these events? Um, we've always tried to give back to the community because we, we give because not because we have, we give because we know how it feels not to have. 
We all grew up in rough neighborhoods. We all grew up, you know, wanting what we didn't have. And so we tried to get back in the communities. Um, I've been blessed to work with some great people. Shannon Holly, um, he's one of my partners from the old neighborhood way back in the day. Uh, he started a foundation called Hope for Tomorrow for suicide awareness and prevention. So we've thrown partials with him and all the funding goes and helps with that to help, you know, him with his projects and, and keep the community safe and give him some resources and outlets. Um, recently, we've been working with AJ Vasquez from Azteca uh, Boxing Club. And we all the money we raise from the shows and stuff go to fund um, His program. the program so the kids could go out of state and compete because he's got some amazing talent in that gym right now. There's some uh, youngsters that are actually going for the Junior Olympics and stuff. So he's doing big things, you know. And, and the great thing about this stuff is, you know, growing up young, doing game banging, dumb stuff. These are guys that I couldn't have been friends with when we were younger, you know. And now they're some of my, my greatest friends in life. And I appreciate them very much for giving the opportunity to give back to our community. Yeah. And a lot of people don't realize that these cars we build, yeah, they're, they're our pleasure and they're fun. But they do a lot for not just us, but they do a lot for the community. And these cars bring people together and people start donating. And that's the true mission, man, in, in a way, mm -hmm. I feel of having some of these, the, it's, I shouldn't say the mission, I think it's a benefit for us to have these cars yep. so we can do stuff for it's, our it's communities. It's a tool and it's a, it's a uh, resource for them to be able to come and open the conversation with it. If it's just for somebody to talk to, you know, we've met some amazing people, heard some amazing heartbreaking stories over our lives, you know? And it's just, it's we're very grateful to be able to the position to be able to give back and help our community. <laughs> Again, from the Lowrider Connection, we'd love to say thank you for all you guys do for your community up here. And I know you guys are having a show coming up um, in June? June? July 6th. Oh, July 6th, yes, July 6th, yes, you're right. We've, yeah, I dropped the ball on that. And the Loretta County was filled up with some amazing shows and I dropped the ball and missed the date. So we are supposed to be in June, so we're in July. But you know, thank you Smoke for doing what you're doing. You know, giving our, our great state of Colorado a avenue to show the world what we got and what we're trying to represent, you know? I thank you, bro. I appreciate that, man. And we love doing it, man. I love coming to people's houses and interrupting their lives just to check out their cars like we did to you guys today. Man, it's awesome. We appreciate it. So thank, thank you. you. I know your kids have grown up in the low riding lifestyle and you've passed the torch on to Monster and he's put out a quality low rider bike. Can you give us a little bit of insight about how he got involved and interested in building a bike and stuff like that? Well, like you mentioned, he was born into this lifestyle. Um, he's always enjoyed it, and he wanted something of his own. So I funded it, he quarterbacked it. You know, and this, this bike was a combination of his ideas and, or all his ideas. He chose the murals, he chose the color, he, he chose what he wanted to do. I even made him shoot the flake on the bike. He shot the flake. Oh, so you guys painted the bike yourself? Oh, yeah, yeah. So he wow. shot it, you know, and, and he chose everything on the bike. And it was kind of a reward for him for his good grades, his sports and everything. Um, the bike is pretty much retired now. Um, you know, when, when, when we were at Uso, I had the great honor of being friends with uh, Kita. Mm -hmm. And you know, Kita was like, bikes for kids. You know, and I'm a big believer on that. No jab against nobody, no disrespect. You know, it's just, when it comes to that, it's a family event, you know, and, and we need to keep the energy and the motivation to keep our lifestyle alive. So we need to not take from the kids and let the kids compete, you know, at their own level. So he's retired the bike. He's got an 85 Grand Prix that we're hopefully to get on here pretty soon. But just like everything in life, I told him, you work hard for the bike, now you gotta work hard for the car. We'll help you, but you're gonna finance it. I'm not doing it for you, man. So yeah, no, he's, he still loves it. It's just now he's in high school 16, sports yeah. and, <laughs> You know? Yeah, it's time to move on. Yeah. Yeah. So. I mean, you guys have done an amazing job with your kids, man. Thank you. So, congratulations to you both. Luis, building all these amazing cars, who would you like to give thanks to? Where does this start? First and foremost, God. Because mm -hmm. without God, I wouldn't have been blessed with this beautiful woman next to me. She is my rock, my rib, and everything in between. She's the one who's motivated me, inspired me. And every which way you could imagine. She pushes me to better, be better, and want to be better in life. 
Um, of course, my club brothers, you know, uh, Charles Luera for always being my go-to guy when I'm down and out on something with the car. Uh, Sean Call for being on a dial, uh, a speed dial for me to come over and help me out with this, you know. Adam Cordova for always coming through on me too. Uh, Martin Rodriguez for um, being a true mentor and the definition of a true big homie. You know, he's, he's a great guy. He inspires, you know, he's, he's the definition of a motivator. I'm Thelma Hernandez Balls for, you know, always coming through in the clutch, you know, and of course, everybody else in the Lord community, you know, for always making life memorable through this journey that we've had. Mm -hmm. Nice. Nellie, who would you like to give thanks to? You know, I'm with him, like first and foremost, God. And, um, you know, with all our club brothers and everything, everything that we've done has been, it's just, I don't know, it makes things more enjoyable when you have a close club like that, where everyone's willing to help out. And, you know, we're one. So he knows, like, I, everything we do is for each other. So I'm thankful for him too. Thankful for my family and our other friends and everything. So, yeah. That's what's up. That is what's <laughs> up, man. And I want to say thanks again to Luis and the Morales family for inviting us over to their garage and to showcase their badass rides up in Northern Colorado. And with that being said, we'd like to thank you again for joining us for another episode of the Lowrider Connection. And please like, subscribe, and hit that notification button so you know when we drop videos. Big shot.